Well, look, joining me now is Britain's strictest head teacher. That's what she's often billed as. She's the founder of the Michaela School, Catherine Burble Singh. Good afternoon to you, Catherine. Afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, I imagine doing an interview in the middle of the day is something of a distraction for a head teacher, let alone using a mobile phone. Um, but, but Catherine, I mean. <laughs> You are known as the strictest head teacher in Britain. You took a bunch of kids, often from, you know, sinker states, kids who were, were told, well, they're destined to fail. That's the background. What can we do? That's society these days. You've delivered the top grades for them, got them working, got them a chance at having a fantastic life, and all credit to you for that. You've taken a lot of grief from a lot of people on the left over it. Where are you on mobile phones? What are the rules in your school? Oh, well, obviously, at our school, the children don't have phones. Um, See, obviously. But, <laughs> but I have to say, it can be hard for some heads to enforce that rule. I used to be of the opinion that leave it up to the head to make that decision for their own school. But I've come to realize that um, many heads would like to do it, but find that they're under so much pressure, it's very difficult. And so I really, I'm, I've been campaigning for this ban for years now, and I'm absolutely thrilled. I can't believe that it's happened. And why is that? Look, we get the best progress eight in the country. I think one of the reasons is because our children don't have phones in school. And actually, I strongly encourage parents not to give their children smartphones at all. The big tech gurus in California, Steve Jobs, uh, Bill Gates, all these guys fly around in private jets and they keep their own children protected yeah. from unsupervised access to the internet. Meanwhile, they're making their billions off of us idiots who are giving our children smartphones. Uh, at break time, if children have phones, they're staring at the phone instead of talking to each other, playing games, doing the sorts of things that develop those sorts of soft skills that you need to be successful in life. Yeah. Every altercation starts on uh, online. And then people break into fights. You wonder why? Well, it's because there was some infighting yeah. going on online. It's just they're not a good way. If they've been sitting at a desk, you want them running around, playing rounders, having a, you know, I mean, we used to exactly. play rounders and hopscotch and goodness knows what, and, and talking face to face, this mad thing that we used to do when we were kids. But this is the thing, isn't it? it it's, the screens have taken over our lives, they've taken over classrooms. I, I have to say, I don't understand the idea that any head teacher doesn't have the power to say, no mobile phone, you get your mobile phone out, it's taken away, it's taken for the week, you're suspended. I mean, you could sort that out in a week with, with, with the parents on board. And if the parents aren't on board, you know what? Go and find another school for your kid, was my answer to that. Can I ask you about the free school meals, though? Celebrities, the Winslets, the, the Ed Sheerans and others. I'm sure they're lovely people. I'm sure they're very concerned about children. But, look, who would disagree that we should make sure that the poorest children get free school meals so we know they're getting a decent hot meal every day? But do you support the idea that the government should provide free school meals, well, existing reception primary, reception year one and year two, so up to age seven, and that that should be extended all the way up to age 11? Well, it does seem odd that we should be paying for Ed Sheeran's children and Kate Winslet's children to have free school meals. Of course, children who families who can't afford it, the state should be stepping in. And that's for the state to decide where, where we draw that line. But the idea that the very richest in society uh, should not be encouraged to buy their own children lunch, <laughs> it undermines the sense of personal responsibility that exactly. we should all uh, admire in parents. The, the, having children, looking after them, taking care of them, feeding them, clothing them, and so on. And certainly, if you can afford to do so, it's somewhat undermining of that responsibility if the state says, no, 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 you're not capable of doing it, we'll do it yeah. for you. But also, I think it's an insult to a lot of families who are are just struggling and, and but they are getting by and they work hard they're in low-paid jobs but they, of course they can afford to feed their children um, I just find it very very strange that people don't think this is a duty of parents and we know I mean certainly when I was at school when you know we told there was a real stigma for youngsters who were on free school meals because you were paid with cash and so if you didn't you know you were on the register oh you're one of the free school meal kids and kids were getting bullied and I've spoken to so many adults who've said how traumatizing that was for them to be singled out like that at school but now kids are playing with these you know smart cards no one knows who's on free school meals. No one knows at all. So there is no stigma. So it seems utterly madness to me to, to use the taxpayers' money to pay for, you know, as you think, Kate Winslet's kids or my kids to have free school meals when that money could be so much better spent on the poorest kids, the kids who are not getting proper parenting and not getting proper nutrition, not getting proper help at home. That money could be spent helping those children's lives. Yes, well, as you say, there is a finite amount of money. So that money could be spent on more teachers, um, more library books. I mean, there's so many things you could spend the money on. It does seem very strange. Uh, and you did mention the idea of virtue signaling before. Um, I do think too often these days people 
liked virtue signal because it will you know make them popular at a dinner party instead of thinking about what's actually going to help the children so and the smartphone is a per is another example of that you know they don't think about the consequences that they're giving them access to to predators and that they're breaking their brains um I don't understand why I've had to been arguing for years to ban smartphones. It should be obvious. You called it the <laughs> bleedingly obvious. Well, the minister <laughs> of the bleeding obvious making an announcement. But that's the thing. So much of this stuff that is we're told this yes. should happen. You think, well, normal, you know, sensible people have been talking about this for a long time. Can I ask you, you, know, you, you have a lot of kids at your school who come from really very poor backgrounds, really underprivileged backgrounds. Often the parents uh, don't speak English as a first language, been unable to help them with their homework. I mean, really, you know, really the kids who have been written off in many schools over many years. Um, is it your experience that those parents can't afford to give their kids, uh, pay for their kids' lunch? Is it your experience that they can't afford to, uh, to give them the basics or, or, or that some of them don't want to, just don't care, too busy, I don't know, drinking, you know, drinking it rather than giving it to the kids? What, what, what's your experience within that sort of community? It's a variety of parents. I mean, there are parents who are struggling generally with parenting, but then there are also parents who are struggling with the cost of living. I mean, we know that this is a problem. And I encourage a government to be interested in that and thinking about where we draw the line and what who, who needs help and who doesn't. And it's that flexibility that you want from a government. This idea of just this blanket payment for everyone is odd. The other thing that I find so odd is that it's only up to 11 years old. But after that, it's fine. All these families can, can, can look after their children after 11, but up to 11, they're not able to. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, and so it's just more flexibility and, and, and more of a bespoke approach, really, that's required. And I understand that governments, successive governments, struggle with that sort of thing. But that's really what we ought to be aiming for, I think. Brilliant to talk to you. As always, keep up the fantastic work. An absolute hero of mine. Uh, Catherine Burble Singh there.